Welcome to the First Cup Podcast. I'm Rick Gaiman, and this is your recap episode for this week's Zozo Championship. And joining me to break it all down, it's him. It's Kyle Porter, KP. Two ball, buddy. Just you and I. You ready to rock and roll? Yeah, I never, I never get introduced first, and now I am getting introduced first and last. And yeah, I'm ready to do this. We got a lot. We got a lot to talk about. There is a lot to talk about. Um, I'm wearing my Tiger Woods. Have you ever seen this hat, by the way? This is a, an actual official Tiger Woods logo. They turned into the, an 83, um, which is an amazing use of of the logo. But I'm wearing this because you know this is the event Tiger got 82 at, and it's mostly wishful thinking with the 83. Where did you? Where did, it looks like it's like. Well, where did you get that? Uh, I got it on eBay, uh, but I believe that they have been uh, Nike has been selling some version of these for at least a couple of years. It's really cool. I, I mean, it's smart. They took the TW, they removed the T, they flipped everything sideways and made it into an 83. Now he just has to get the 83rd victory and that will be, it'll be like an iconic logo. Yeah, it's, it's, it is pretty sweet. I feel like. So I've been thinking about golfer logos recently mm. uh, for a project that I'm working on that we can talk about later. Um, and Tiger's, I think, I think you look at Tiger's logo. I can't believe we're talking about Tiger Woods' logo off the top of the Zozo yeah, Championship right. recap, but to be expected, I think you look at Tiger's logo and you're like, ah, it's okay. But then you start comparing it to other golf logos and you're like, that it's pretty good. Right. Like there's no good. There's not really any good golf logo. Uh, uh, go, excuse me. Golfer logos. There's obviously a ton of good golf logos, but golfer logos is, is difficult. So. So. OK. Do you remember Tiger's like first logo that like it was yeah, a circle? The the, the, the yeah. yin, 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 whatever it's called. Yeah. And then what that and then he I'm butchering it. Uh, uh, yin, yin yang. Right. Is that right? I think that's right. I don't know, but uh, then he went Jacob, to the TW. Jump in here. Help us. Is it Yin Yang or Yin Yang? Yin Yang. There you go. Okay. Yin Yang. Okay. Yeah, the that's... issue with golfer logos uh, is they only go two ways: uh, initials yep. or silhouette. Those are yeah. the only two options, which. I guess makes sense, but it's a little unfortunate. There's got to be a better way to start doing this. Well, you could, I mean, you could go with like, like why is Tiger's logo not a tiger? He's never, has he ever really? Okay. okay so oh, here we go. <laughs> I happen to be wearing my like actual Tiger Woods, uh, you know, Frank, Frank, Frank t-shirt. So this yeah. is a more recent, recent logo that they've come out with at Nike. That's sort of, you know, is Frank, the, the head cover. So they, I, I they like very recently have embraced sort of this and they they do make these with the Frank logo on the cap and those look pretty slick. Yeah, but that's not I a just, Tiger Woods logo. Yeah, the TW down at the bottom here. There you go. That's the Tiger Woods. You Is almost just Tiger showed Tiger us your Tiger. your bare skin on uh, the first guy podcast. We would so have had to change this from a PG to an R rated show. I just I feel like the 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 golfer logos don't fit in with the broader culture of like golf logos. Like there's some amazing. I mean, obviously, like so many of the top clubs. You know, you think about Wingfoot or Seminole or Augusta National. Like they just have amazing logos that are very desirable. And somehow golfers have gone as far away from that as possible. It's like I think of somebody like Angel Cabrera, which bad example because you know everything that's happened to him recently but why is why is his logo i don't know even know if he has a logo but why would his logo not be like um a duck right isn't that his nickname like el el pato uh, are golfers using logos so see their logo is still part of their manufacturers deal right like or could tiger take the tw logo away from nike and profit off of it or is it more of just an extension off of their current uh sponsorship obligation that's a good question and i think what one of the things that's interesting is uh rory does not have a logo right he's he's one of the few like even like dj's logo is, is actually pretty good it's um, that lowercase d right 
Yeah, and it's yeah, also a cool. J. I think it's also a J. Oh, that makes sense. Yeah, it's a lowercase D and a capital J. Does that work? I don't know. I'm not. I don't know if I'm thinking about it correctly. Yeah, that works. Um, JT's is not good. Hunter Hunter Mayhan had one that was not good. JJ Henry has a logo. Uh, Phil's is actually pretty good. I kind of like that. I mean, Phil's works because that that's exactly it. Phil's works because it's the essence of Phil, right? Yeah. He can pull that off, totally. right? He can, a, a more serious golfer could not pull off a, a silhouette of him jumping two inches off the ground. That couldn't happen. I mean, even Kevin Nas, like reaching into the cup or whatever, or walking forward, like, you know, there it is. I look at it. Producer Jake. I, was, so I had that on. I had that on. Yeah. Tap. That was nice. I've, I figured he did. That's this tough. is what. This is what gen engendered the rabbit hole for me that I jumped down recently was this one right here. Uh, I, I, it's, it feels like a miss by golfers because there's so many like great golf logos and so few golfers actually have good ones. All right, I'm going to try to not that bad. I'm going to try to bridge this back here. What would Hideki Matsuyama's uh, logo ideal logo be? It would be the bow, even though he Ooh. he didn't do he it. didn't do but the bow be, though. I know. Um, I don't know. See, that's where, like, what, does Hideki have a nickname? Uh, in the fantasy community, he's referred to as Dekibot because he's like, a, you know, the swing's like a robot. But I don't know if he embraces that nor knows that. <laughs> I've uh, I've actually heard that. See, something like that would be like if Hideki had, like, I, I almost feel like the more obscure, the better. If Hideki had a, like, came out and was like, hey, here's my logo. It's a robot. I would wear a, I would wear the, I legitimately would buy a hat that was a, that was a robot of Hideki. Would you not? It would, it would yeah, no, I would, because it would also make me feel like I was in on, uh, like I was in on something. Totally. And that's, I feel like that's like half the deal with, with, with stuff like Wingfoot and like these, these logos of different clubs is like, if you, if you know, you know, right? Like you don't, right. Like you're wearing it so that your friends are like, oh, you know, well, whatever. And it's just like the the initials are just they don't, yeah, they don't make it. That's not part of that deal. Anyway, let's talk about Hideki. Hideki Matsuyama wins the Zozo Championship, his seventh career victory on the PGA Tour. He did not go wire to wire, but he was in the mix throughout the entirety of this event. And KP, when the dust settled. It says it's a five-shot victory, but it certainly did not feel like that about midway through the final round when um, Cameron Tringale actually tracked him down. And I was thinking, oh boy, Tringale, uh, as much as I want you to, to break this stretch where you have made more money than anyone without a victory, it can't be here. It can't be over a decky in Japan, yeah. right? Like I, I was, I, I'm always actively rooting for Tringale, but I could not in this moment. <laughs> Well, for sure. Hideki's back nine was super impressive, though, right? Because, like, I saw it when it was, what, thir he was at 13, and Tringali, did Tringali get it to 13 or just 12? I think just uh, 12. Yes, just 12. And then, and then Hideki just kind of, I mean, his back nine was big time. And he said, like, you know, he. I saw in his his press his his transcripts are amazing. By the way, if you're just yes. in want something fun to read, like they're hilarious and like just they're very endearing. I feel like just the way he talks about things. Um, and he said he was asked, "When did you know it was over?" And he said, "Well, the shot on 18." Like, <laughs> and I was like, yeah. "Really? You could have made like a nine on 18 <laughs> and still won the I, golf." Like, I could have, I could have pitched pinch hit for him there and still won this <laughs> golf tournament, <laughs> which is a very Hideki thing to say. But it, it was, you know, he kind of closed out the tournament the way that he started it. Right? He goes out 64 on Thursday, maintains that through Friday, Saturday, and then he shuts it down not on the front nine on Sunday, but on the back nine and. It was cool, man. Like that, this, the, I think that we lose some of the context because it's three in the morning. It's, we don't understand Hideki's relationship with the country of Japan. But what a dream season, right? To yeah. start it with a master's win, to close it with, I, I don't like people, people might think like, oh, well, it would have been cool if it was the Olympics. I honestly, like, I think, I don't think Hideki cares. I think, 
I think he just wanted to win once at a high level in like in his home country. And he did that. And it was like, did anybody have a more memorable year than Hideki? Maybe, maybe Morikawa. No, no. The answer is Hideki I, uh, by a I mile. Think so, right? Yeah. yeah. And that's, and, and I wrote about this afterward, like one of the more memorable years of anybody in the, in the modern era, honestly. And that sounds like, I'm not saying more successful or more accomplished or anything like that, but more memorable to win the masters and, and, and take, and to be able to take that to Japan, to play it, just to participate in the Olympics in Japan and then to win a tour event to close out the year in Japan. Like that has to be uh, like a, like one of the more unparalleled runs in the modern era of just memorable golf for somebody at that level. Do you agree? I 1000% agree. And I also like that uh, you and I in this moment and most of us, most of us, we cannot truly kind of figure out how important this is for him and his relationship with, with his country. And you, you just start looking at the numbers and you start to think, if someone would do this for America, for another country, like it'd be, it would be unheard of, right? So this, this is the seventh PGA Tour victory for Hideki Matsuyama. So he now owns over half of all PGA Tour victories for Japanese players. Seven out of thirteen. We talked about that earlier yeah. the week on Tuesday. It was six out of twelve. Now seven out of thirteen. And even if you open this up to Asia, an entire continent, right? Uh, KJ Choi is now he's now one win behind KJ Choi for yeah. PGA Tour titles which is eight that's the most wins by an Asian player so you really have to zoom out for a second like the historical context that Hideki is walking in right now for his country for his continent is like pretty staggering stuff well it's it's super interesting because <clears throat> then you have to start talking about Okay, who are the, if I said best player from each continent all time, who are your six, right? So if you take, if you take wow. Antarctica out of it, right, and you, <laughs> how, and you go. How di we're going to get an email or a tweet about that. <laughs> so, so and so great golfer from Ant Antarctica. <laughs> <laughs> they are not uh, the huge participant on the OWGR homepage. So I don't know what to tell you all. <laughs> So if you take Antarctica out of it, I did not think that's a sentence I would be I would be saying on a pod, on a golf podcast. Yeah. Take Antarctica out of it. Who who are your six from every other continent best all time? And and I think and we can we could if you if you want to talk about that, I'd love to. But I think Hideki, I think Hideki is probably I don't know. This is maybe a little unfair because I'm not as we're younger and we don't have like maybe some good historical context, not just in Asia, but Australia and wherever. Um, and I, I, but I think Hideki might is probably it or close right, to let's it. Just, really let's close just to do it. this. Well, the thing is, even if he's not now, he's 29. So it's yeah. like, <laughs> dude, that's crazy, right? Like he's, I was, I was looking that up. He's like nine years younger than DJ or maybe eight. Maybe eight years younger. And I kind of think of, and this is maybe just dumb on my part, but I kind of think about them in the same broad group age wise, sort of. I think DJ seems a little younger. And Hideki's yeah. been around for so long that it's a little like, you know, aren't you like 35? And he's still in his 20s. That's crazy. It is crazy. So Asia would, Asia has to be Hideki or KJ Choi, I would imagine. It's it to me. I agree. I it. I just the the Masters win is a monumental deal, you know. And I yeah, know KJ Choi won the won the players and has won more, but the Masters thing just trumps it for me. Yeah, and uh, in all likelihood, uh, Hideki's not done winning. Uh, so hopefully, he piles on more there. Let's go to Australia next. Australia's kind of well. Yeah. Uh, here's here's. And maybe we need producer. I'm going to get myself into some geography trouble here, but I love it. What what continent is? This is going to be embarrassing. I should just put it in the chat. What continent is VJ Singh from? Fiji. Well, yeah, is that part of no, no, it's, it's, it'd be the Pacific. 
I mean, like sort of it'd, usually it'd be like Asia, right? Like Australia Pacific. I thought it's it almost, was like Oceania or whatever. Oceania is sort of, yeah. Okay, so VJ's in that conversation. Craig Norman's in it. Uh, who Peter Peter Thompson from the 50s is in it. Yeah, I actually wasn't considering VJ, which kind of throws a wrench into my... I kind of assumed it was Greg Norman, like off the top of the head. But that was my first... VJ, yeah, that, was, that was my first thought also. Uh... I don't know. That one's interesting. We can come back to that. Africa? It's Gary Player? It has to be, right? Yeah. <laughs> we will not slander. We will not take this one away from Gary Player. It has to be Gary Player. <laughs> <laughs> Friend of the pod. Uh, yeah. You could throw... I mean, Ernie Els was probably better at golf Short than Gary list. Player, but players more accomplished so right which i think you have to go um, okay south europe? america europe let's go to europe uh europe's got a lot of good ones Seven? how about i was gonna Faldo? i was leaning sevi because sevi's got see sevi's sevi's got you know the wins sevi's also got the aura see it's kind of like weird yeah. how you like want to say the best golfer right like i think if you said who do who would uh, their peers say was the best? It's Sevi, well, like one thousand percent. Um, yeah, which is probably and I think why that's I lean that way. I think that's interesting because I've kind of written about best Euro ever in the past, and I think there's a pretty short path for Rory to get there, um, which sounds maybe crazy, but like. What he's done, and this was a few, this was when he was still like in his 20s and, and maybe turning 30. But just his trajectory was like, wow, if he went seven majors, it's Rory McIlroy is probably the greatest European of all time. You know, and I think Faldo has the most majors ever for a Euro with six. Um, but, but I think that people would kind of, I think that people would probably say like, hey, I know Faldo has more majors than Seve, but Seve was just... I don't know. You're right about like the aura thing. Like there's just something about him and like his presence and like all this, this different stuff. Uh, so yeah. May, how many majors did Seve win? Three. I thought it was four, but I can find out real quick. Um, five. Wow. We each, we each shorted him five open, open championship thrice and uh, two masters. So he's got to be ahead of, of Rory still probably, or close, to, or I don't know, close to it. So let's say, let's just say Seve. We're, we're making this up. Who cares? Okay. Okay. So so we've got we've got Hideki. We've got uh, V. We, we've got confirmation that VJ is um, like part of the Australia grouping. Okay. So we give we give we give Oceania to to VJ. Uh, oh gosh. We're, if you're watching on YouTube, or if you're listening, I guess, on YouTube, we're on the Wikipedia page for Oceana, which is another thing that I didn't think I would ever would happen. Europe uh, gets Sevi. Yeah. Asia gets Hideki. Africa's Gary Player. Yeah. So at least Oceana is, North and Oceana's, do we say VJ? VJ or Greg, or, uh, Greg Norman, right? Okay. I'd probably, I'd probably say VJ. Not Matt Jones. N not yet. There's time. <laughs> <laughs> and then, Still plenty of time. What are we, what are we missing? Uh, North America and South America. So let's go to South. South. Well, North America is very easy, right? His name's Tiger Woods. Yeah, the cat. Right. So South America. Um, I'm just gonna start. I have, to, I have to get my brain into this by naming South American countries, right? So, like, is it uh, is it is it? Uh, it's got to be Angel Cabrera, right? Ooh, two majors: Oakmont, Augusta. I mean, fifty-two yeah. professional wins. I don't. I don't know. But those are. I, I, and this is where I'm a little short. I'm probably like just forgetting somebody or whatever, but I'm a little short on history of like, you know, South America, like Chilean golfers from the seventies or whatever. 
Yeah, I'm trying to look through the list here. Um, it's a, it's it it it, it might be Cabrera. Yeah, where are we missing from? I mean, you got to think Brazil, Brazil, Argentina, Peru. Chile, Peru, Uruguay, Paraguay, Venezuela. Is that oh, in South America? Johnny Vegas? <laughs> Soon. Joaquin Neiman. South America is not necessarily a golfing. Uh, no haven. It might be. It, it might be on Hill Carrera. Yeah, I think you have to default to Angel just because he's the only. I think he is the only one with majors. But I mean, between Neiman, Mito coming up. Well, I, Mito, give oh, him five Mito. years. That'll be fine. Just, yeah. 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 I mean, can you, can over you imagine? Under on, on majors? We'll have to do or? an. We'll have to do an off-season show of who will be the goat from all of these continents. <laughs> okay, so we've got we've got VJ, Sevi, Gary Player, Hideki, Angel, and Tiger. It's a hell of a line, right? Yeah. That's crazy. I mean, yeah. and good for Hideki. Like, I don't know. He, he's, uh, I was always kind of neutral toward him. Uh, I didn't dislike him, but I wasn't like, I, 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 I was never in love with him. And, you, and, and this year at the Masters, he was so like endearing. And he was so, I don't know. I just, I, I really, became like a fan of his if that's like the right way to even say that i i just i found myself i think he has like a good worldview and perspective and i found myself just rooting for him especially in this week playing playing at the zozo in japan um so yeah i don't know man it's been a really cool year for him and i'm i'm glad that he, he that he capped it with a win there i do also think it's interesting like he um not that he knew this year was coming, but there were some quotes from him. I think it was actually in 2019 where he was like, I cannot wait for 2020 because, you know, the the Olympics are going to be in Tokyo. And then like that whole thing gets pushed back. And I do wonder, this has probably been a really, it's been a really weird two years for everybody. But for him, who was kind of looking at an entire 2020 year of, hey, this is going to be a really great big opportunity opportunity for me. I'm so excited. He eventually gets it done uh, in 2021, probably to the you know towards the ceiling of his of his expectations i do wonder what this looks like moving forward for him you know does he does he need like that outside motivation of playing in japan or is he now much more comfortable in his own skin like i'm excited i'm excited to see what hideki does in 2022 and beyond yeah i am too you know he talked after his win about how um i think he was shigeki mariyama uh was like urging him toward that all-time asian uh wins number of of tying kj Choi with eight or, or maybe surpassing him with nine and i think like look it, you know him and him and uh hideki matsuyama and rory mcelroy have played almost the exact same number of tournaments i think on the pga tour i think rory's at like 205 and hideki's at 201 or 202 something like that and I think when you frame it like that, it still feels like there's a ton of runway there, even though I like in my head, I just, for whatever reason, think of Hideki as being older. Um, and we yeah. just talked about this. He's, he's not, and not only is he not older, he's not, he doesn't have like a ton of miles on the, you know, on the odometer. So I, yeah, I think that's super compelling. And I think he's such a fun uh, character and, and figure to have in, in golf right now. Yeah, I completely agree. Cameron Tringale finishes T2 with Brendan Steele. Tringale, oh man, it's um, it's a weird place to be. He holds a record that uh, I think he doesn't <laughs> mind, mind holding, right? But I don't think he wants to be the record holder of this any longer, which is the most money earned on the PGA Tour without a victory, upwards of $14 million at this point. Great career, lots of contention, uh, improving year over year, still yet to find the winner's circle. It probably didn't matter um, where he, when he bogeyed 17 and 18, but I mean, he was tied atop the leaderboard with six or seven holes to go here. I think it's the thing I was saying about with him, it's got to be hard when you get, you know, two kind of rips at it a year to, to win a tournament. And, you know, the, the money, the most money ever without a win is kind of a fun thing, but it's also got to like mess with your head a little bit where you, you're like, oh, I'm actually, this is one of my two. I better take advantage of it. You just, 
it's so hard for somebody like that to to stay in like with with Hideki or with Rory last week. It's like I don't know. I'll have like eight, nine, ten shots at a tournament over the next year. Right. And that's not true of somebody like Tringali if he's realistic with himself. And that has to be a difficult mental battle or struggle, especially when you haven't won so many, you know, time after time after time after time. Um I don't know. That that's that's how I was thinking about him as as they kind of finished up with with the deck he went in. Since we've been framing this around how many starts these guys have, we know that Rory and Hideki are in the 200-ish range. Those are PGA Tour starts for Rory, right? You weren't counting like worldwide stuff. Okay. Yeah, um, that's right. Because that's what, that's what I have for Tringale here. Take a guess at how many starts Cameron Tringale has on the PGA Tour. Uh, he's probably uh, he's probably my age. He's probably like 35, 30. I don't know, maybe he's younger. He's, he, well, I won't tell you. Well, I'll tell you after. I, I won't influence your guess here. I think he's 34, actually, but I might be wrong about that. Um, gosh, I don't know. 300? Wow, okay. He's He is 34, so correct. Yeah, 313. 313 okay. starts. Last year, he made 27. It was his best year ever. He made $2.4 million, now up to 14.5. Uh, but yeah, you're right. Like I don't know out of these 313 how many he actually contended in because he only has three... Well, now four runner-up finishes. So it's like, it really is a very, very small number of events that he is probably in contention with six holes to go. We saw one this week, but yeah, that's gotta, I would, I, I would be fighting mental battles with myself if that were me. Well, and I think it speaks to like this gap between like, he's a good pro, right? Like I think anybody would look at his career and say, oh, he like he's been a, he's been successful on this tour that includes 170 guys a year or whatever, yes, whatever the sure. number is. And yet it, it, it almost feels like he has, and this is not true, but it feels sometimes like he has no chance to win because of some of the guys that are beating him and how, like, I mean, it just, it feels like a chasm. Now there are events you can be in where there's those guys aren't playing or whatever, but that's just that's got to be a difficult thing for somebody like him who's a journeyman, whatever you want to, however you want to define that, to like deal with. Of like, man, I'm really good, but like, there's still this. <laughs> I mean, five shots on on the tour is a like it's the Grand Canyon, right? It, it, if you're losing by that to somebody like Hideki, who's not going to make mistakes, that's just that mentally that has to be tough to to grapple with. The fact that he even has had his tour card for 12 consecutive years is an unbelievable accomplishment, right? We see how yeah. deep, all, uh, you know, we're, we're going through second stage just this week. Like, there, it's so hard to even get a tour card. The fact that you can keep it for 12 years is an unbelievable accomplishment. He is in the top tiny percent of, of professional golfers of all time. But God, he just wants that dark trophy on the mantle, doesn't he? <laughs> Well, it, and it and it speaks to I think people I think people who are watching don't understand how good the Cameron Tringales are, and it makes it 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 doesn't you lose context of how good the Rory McIlroys are. It's like you don't understand how good Cameron Tringale is, which means you don't actually understand how good Rory is. We kind of look at like the superstars like singularly, and we yeah. but but when you do that, you lose the context of how like Rory is or who, Hideki, whoever, Spieth, DJ, whoever you want to throw in there, they are insane. Like, I, like people don't, I think you just don't understand like how actually good they are because you don't understand how good Cham Cameron Tringali is. And I think that is, that's an interesting kind of wrinkle in professional golf that I wish could be, that I wish there was some way to like broadcast that or contextualize it. And it's just very difficult to do. Cameron Tregali was 24th last season uh, in strokes gain total. So you could argue Colin Moore, or, uh, Cameron Tregali was the 24th best player on tour last season ahead of Colin Morikawa and Jordan Speed. That's why that name was in my, was in my brain. He's very, very good. Um, yeah. They do it in different ways. Fun stuff. Totally. We've got to get to our best bets. I got to talk about a couple other notables near the top of the leaderboard and also lots of money doled out oh. in the one and done. Unfortunately, not as much to you, Kyle. More on that on the other side because first, we're going to take a quick break and hear a word from our partners. And we're back. 
couple of interesting names. Couple of interesting names here at the top of the leaderboard, or at least in contention at times this week. Tommy Fleetwood. Tommy Fleetwood finished T7 at the Zozo Championship, uh, shot back to back 70s on the weekends, fell a little bit on Saturday and Sunday. But what is the current sentiment around Tommy Fleetwood right now? I think, I, well, so I read this email newsletter called on rickrungood.com and the proprietor of it tells me that Tommy Fleetwood has not been good since the 2020 yeah. Honda Classic. And That's factually correct. That is factually correct. The proprietor also <laughs> tells me that that was an inflection point in Tommy Fleetwood's career. I think what's, I think what is weird is, and this is where the Ryder Cup is not helpful. You're like, oh, Fleetwood's on the Ryder Cup team. He's still like, but like he, Tommy Fleetwood in 2021 is very different than Tommy Fleetwood in 2018, even though he's on like one of the, one of the lenses through which we see him as being on the Ryder Cup team, you know? Mm -hmm. And I think that that is like not tricking us, but he's just not like a, he's not like a threat going into major championships. Like, I don't, I'm not. I'm not going to the, there was like a three or four year run there where it was like, Hey, Fleetwood, like, I think he's one of my 15 guys. That's like kind of in this. And I just don't, I, 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 I don't know how you can say that right now. Like while sub still subscribing to like reality, like the reality of the situation. And that's a bummer because I want like, it's like golf is better when Tommy Fleetwood is thriving. It's super fun and he's great. And like the nice dude and, and great at golf He's just he's just not playing that well right now. So maybe this is something. Maybe it's a cat. I don't know what it is. So but. the thing that I left out about that whole inflection point is a lot of Tommy's ball striking struggles uh, closely align with his switch to Taylor Made mm. um, at timing. And I certainly uh, Taylor Made, if you're listening, love the products. Don't want to throw you under the bus, but it, 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 we've seen this right. We've and I, I'm not saying this is the issue, but we've seen this with guys who. Whether they can't get comfortable um, with new sticks, it's a different process. Some guys feel like they're starting over a little bit. I'm, I'm not saying at all that is what's happening here with Tommy Fleetwood because it's hard to stay kind of as good as he was as, what, a top 15 player for X number of years for longer than that. But but I do think it's interesting that that could be part of the problem. I think he's a little bit hurt by the style of, like, tour golf, PGA Tour golf. Uh you know, since he's been doing that more full time, although I guess did he lose it? I think he lost his card this year, right? I believe that is correct because we were talking about that a couple months ago, and I don't think anything has changed. So I'm pretty sure he does not have a tour card. So I think he he just like what he does well, which is shot shaping. Um, I think his driving has dropped off a little bit as well. If you look at some of the numbers, but the things he does well play great on European tour style courses. A lot of them, not all of them. Uh, and at major championships, at the Open, at the U.S. Open, places where ball striking, shot shaping, um, playing fast and firm is like uh, just is is really what's what's the word I'm looking for? Like it, you're awarded disproportionately at those events compared to regular PGA Tour stops. And so I do think I think some of it might be like maybe his confidence is a little bit beaten down because he's not thriving at the mm. um bridge stones and and uh, they don't even go there anymore but you know that that style of <laughs> course that, that the pga tour is is more known for than kind of where he was thriving before does that like does am i making sense there no and again that it's it's uh in a lot of things in life and a lot of things especially in golf are the 2080 rule right you get 80 percent of your results in 20% of the inputs, right? And 20% of yeah. the, that, that means five events a year, you're making the vast majority of your money. And if you get the, and for Tommy, for a long time, those were, those were bigger events. He wasn't winning them, but they were bigger events and he was thriving in them. So uh, no, I think that, I think that logic does track. Yeah. So I, I'm hopeful. I mean, it's, I think about back even to like the, uh, 2019 open at Portrush when it was him and, and, uh, 
Shane Lowry, and it's it's just it's so fun. He's such a fun character at at uh, at those tournaments. Yeah, that's a good point. He got buzzed by Lowry by six. I mean, like you know what I mean? It's yeah. It's like JB Holmes at um, Troon. Um, okay, where do you want to go next? You want to go Morikawa, Xander, or Ricky? Uh, let's go. Let's go, Ricky. Ricky Fowler follows up his week Ricky at the, Fowler. Thank you very much at the CJ Cup, where he was in contention with Rory McElroy throughout with a T44 at the Zozo Championship rounds of 70, 71, 71, 71. We don't have the strokes gain metrics uh, to really see how it bared out, but I saw a couple of big numbers on Ricky's scorecard. Obviously, one event. Um, across the globe, you could chalk up to a lot of things. But for me, as of right now, as we trend towards the end of 2021 and we get into 2022, Ricky Fowler is one of the more interesting storylines for me next year. I agree. And I also agree with you about the big numbers. I mean, he had... He had the triple double that you don't want to have. He had a he had a triple he had a triple bogey and two doubles. Uh, that's not good. Uh, I'm not I'm not worked up about it. I think I think CJ Cup and again strokes not having strokes gained is is hard when you do have it for CJ Cup and you're trying to figure out okay like what what was going on here? Why did you make a triple? Whatever. Uh, I think I mean. His problem has not really been that he's not scoring. He's still making a lot of birdies and eagles. But if you look at his bogey average or bogey avoidance or whatever from 20 from last season, it wasn't very good. I think he was 135th on tour in bogey avoidance or something like that. I don't know. That might have been a different stat. I think that's what it was. And that's that's where, especially at majors, it's like, man, the John Roms and you know, guys like that, like they just, they save pars. They just don't make those huge numbers. And that's always been, you know, I remember, I think it was Aaron Hills or maybe it was Quail Hollow. One of those, one of those majors in like 2017 time, Ricky played so well. And then he makes a triple on the first day and you're, and there was a stat from Justin Ray. It's like, nobody's ever won after making it. He just takes himself out of it in ways that are, that are unhelpful. And that happened, not that he was going to win this week, because I thought Hideki was amazing, but he just that like those mistakes, if he can figure out how to make those like zero, like pars and even just like bogeys, I, I think he can have like a pretty nice 2022. Yeah, this week it was big numbers and it was big number. He made a double on a par five. He, I just it's hard to do. Last season made bogey or worse on 17.7 percent of his holes that is a hundred it was 155th on tour out of okay. 100 196 qualified golfers so the bottom 25 percent he made you know makes more bogeys yeah. than a lot of guys on tour that, that's yeah and he's still scoring which i think is encouraging Correct. yeah he was like seventh in birdie or better percentage or something like that which i do think is encour encouraging is the perfect word for it that's exactly what it is it's yeah. encouraging and and I think the weird part is like he's not if if uh like if those were like Matthew Wolf's numbers that we just said, you'd be like, oh well he's 22. He doesn't know what he's doing or whatever. You would say that about any young guy. But with Fowler, he does I mean he's been out there for eleven years and he does know what he's doing. So that's where you get have a little more concern of okay, is that like a swing? It, it seems more like a swing issue than like a mental issue. Colin Morikawa, um, I would argue didn't play all that well. Ends up finishing T7, which I think is just basically, I don't know though. I was going to say basically his baseline right now, but we've talked about this a lot, KP. He is to me intentionally volatile. He is, um, it's why he wins so often, but he is just without his best stuff, uh, a top eight player on tour. And actually, actually, hold on. Uh, I don't think it's been issued yet, but Nosferatu on Twitter tells me he's going to become the number two player in the world. Wow. How about that? Do you think, uh, do you think he can overtake Rom next year? He's 62 events into his official world golf ranking career. And he's going to be the number two ranked player in the world. Do I think he can overtake yeah. John Rom next year? Uh, let me look at the gap. 
Yeah, I think he can. What's the gap? Uh, well, it's not updated yet, but it'll be about uh, 1.4-ish po average points. So Rom will be like a 10, and Morikawa will be like an 8.5 or 8.6. Okay. Okay. Which will be the same gap between Morikawa and DJ, who will basically be two and three, to the guys at four and five. It'll be like that same gap. So there's a, um, oh gosh, I'm going to butcher this, but there's a new feature on Data Golf. Have you seen this? Uh, describe it. <laughs> I don't know what, what we're talking It's called, about. <laughs> uh, it's sorry, it's under the, the strokes gain. <laughs> Query tool. <laughs> Real quick, my wife always does that. She goes, so yesterday, did I tell you this already? And I'm like, I don't know. <laughs> like, you haven't given me enough of the story yet <laughs> to tell you. You haven't told to me anything. You, you've told me this, so I'm not really <laughs> sure. <laughs> so, okay. So, so there's a new feature on Data Golf that is, it shows you, it's called box plots. And you can rank guys by <clears throat> their, mm. essentially by like their best stuff you can say okay like who like when when players are performing at the I'm, I'm gonna like i'm not gonna say this correctly but hopefully it makes sense when players are performing at their 95th percentile how good is that compared to everybody else's 95th percentile and they they have it you can rank it by like 90 uh, i think it's 95th 75th then their median so like um like how like the middle essentially and then 25th percentile and fifth percentile and I was emailing with, with those guys, um, uh, Will and Matt. They do an awesome job. They're great dudes. And they were talking about how it, it – because it, the golf community has sort of talked about how Morikawa is volatile. And they said that the numbers match up where if you sort by whose 95th percentile is best, he's up at the top. And if you sort by whose 25th percentile is – uh, is also best. He's actually at the at, like closer to the bottom. So mm -hmm. like his his good is really really good, and his bad is pretty bad, right? And honestly, like isn't that? I mean, we talk about this all the time. Isn't that what you want? Like, isn't that how you want your data to kind of play out? If I could, um, okay. If you removed every golfer, professional golfer from the planet, and uh, we still knew, like the modern game, if they said like create, create the type of player that you wanted, I would create Colin Morikawa. I would create a guy mm. who is just deadly on approach, who can lose or gain four or five strokes putting in a single week. I would want a guy that embraces volatility because he'd be hoisting a ton of trophies, and if you finish. T 55, no one cares. Like to me, if I could mold someone for, I don't know what the metric would be like today's game. It would, it would, it would be very, very close to what Morikawa does. I'd make him a little yeah. bit longer, but like yeah. uh, now I'm asking too much, right? Like he's so good. <laughs> <laughs> so I just, I just sorted over the last 12 months by like the 95th percentile and he's third behind Rom and Cantlay, which no surprise. And yep. then I sorted by 25th percentile, which is like kind of your bad stuff. And he is down. I don't have the exact number, but he's down with like Matt Wallace, KH Lee, Lonto Griffin, Chad Ramey, uh mm -hmm. brandon grace andrew yeah. putnam like not people that he that you would associate with colin morikawa right and so i think that's interesting i don't i wanted to throw that out there i don't know if that has i don't know how that relates to his t7 this week i i'm with you it was kind of like after the first day you're like well morikawa is probably I mean, with with having Hideki up there and how deep he took it on day one, it's just it's hard to kind of play your way back into it on a course that was playing pretty tough, uh, especially through the middle couple of days. So, um, yeah, it was I thought it was a fine show. And I think for him, like coming off CJ, coming off Zozo, I think you can go into 2022 with a ton of confidence that you didn't have maybe after the FedEx Cup of like, OK, Morikawa really could become the number one player in the world. And maybe that's reading too much into just two tournaments, but that kind of covered up anything that he did poorly during the FedEx Cup for me. We are, um, I mean, I'm looking at this. We are, again, I'm no OWGR aficionado. 
but we are uh, uh, <laughs> we're like a month out from well, maybe a little bit more than that the end of the year from a lot of really good ROM results falling off and a lot of bad Morikawa results falling off, which is only yeah. going to improve his position going into 2022. So it would not surprise me one single bit if early in 2022, Colin Morikawa becomes your number one player in the world. I think that might be one of, I do 10 predictions like to like going into the new year. I think that might be one of them is that he'll become the number one player in the world. I mean, he might win, he could win tournament champions and probably that, that might do it. Yeah, if or something that. like early, like uh, like if he wins Riviera, I'd be like, oh yeah, sure. Mm. Uh, Xander Shoffley, I don't have anything to say. He finished. He, I'm yeah. just, we're bringing. Him, he's he was the favorite. He was the favorite coming into the event. He finished T eight twenty eight. He played himself out of it on on Friday when he shot a seventy four. He was great on the weekend. Xander's great. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, he's. Uh, yeah, he just needs to win in twenty twenty two. I think. I think I go back to what I said about him, like Cantlay in 2021, all of a sudden you win three times and it's like, oh, okay. Like that makes up for kind of the lack of winning over the last two or three years. Who needs a win the most? Because because when I we talked about this like six months ago, maybe a little bit longer. Oh, uh, no, maybe six months ago. And Spieth was top of list, right? It was like, it needs it. I don't care what it is. Any event, anywhere. Who needs a win? Rory's back in the winner's circle a couple times. Spieth in the winner's circle. Probably uh, Cameron Tringali. <laughs> well, definitely. but <laughs> Definitely uh, on know, the short list. <laughs> you know who kind of needs a win? Dustin Johnson. DJ. This, was this the first year that, he's, uh, that he went without winning, right? In like a decade. Yeah, that one was, uh, I think there was another year. I think it was like seasons, consecutive seasons. Okay. Yeah, when won. you do seasons, it's, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because he did not win in the calendar year of 2014, but I believe yeah. he did win a PGA Tour event in 2014. Like a season. That's right. That's right. Um, so he's, a, a, Xander's up there for me, I think. Yeah, I think that was... I think he's got to be top of my list. I'm just scrolling through the world rankings because Fe even Fe so uh, six months ago it was Finau and Speed. Those were the yeah, those were the yeah. ones that needed wins. Now I think it's an answer. Even got his. So now we're like, okay, I'm kind of bottom of the barrel. Now I think it's Xander. Yeah, I think so. Is um where is uh who was I just thinking about? Where's Tommy Fleetwood ranked? Fortieth. Okay, so that like if he was. I mean, he's up there. I think. I guess. I. I don't. I don't really know how to categorize him right now. So maybe. Maybe. Maybe he's not. Um, but if we're think, if we're still thinking about him as a star, he was a little bit in that Finau category for me. Of. Yeah. Are you a star? Because like we haven't really. Okay. How about a couple of younger guys? How long until we're like, why doesn't Joaquin Neiman win more? Oh, oh, you know who mine actually is? With Wait, Xander? can I? Uh, yeah. It's, it's not Matthew Wolf, is it? No. Okay, Close. who is it? Scotty Scheffler. Oh, yeah, that's a good one. That, yeah. that, okay, he, so those two guys. Those two guys, right? So Neiman won early. He won Greenbrier like a couple years ago. Um, and, and Scheffler's never won. How much longer before we in the media start <laughs> ripping these guys apart for not winning it up? <laughs> well, I think that... I think Neiman is a little bit just kind of who he is. Like I, I'm not like his 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 skill set is is awesome and it's super fun to watch. I just don't know if the win equity is super high. Shuffler is a little different in that he's really thrived at a lot of majors. I think he's got mm. six top 15s in his last seven, some, something like that. And so you're like, well. <laughs> What what is this here? Because mm. he's thrived at majors. He he takes down Rom at the Ryder Cup, and it's like you got to win like a Colonial or something. Now, I don't think like he has to do it in 2021 and maybe even in 2022. But at some point, you got to start winning a little bit to to kind of I don't know. Val I hate the word like validate your how well right. you're playing, but but a little bit, you know. Um, it's weird so because I, I would, if he I would goes say Scheffler over Neiman. 
Scheffler's a good one. It's weird because um, if he goes 12 more years without winning, we will praise him for keeping his card and making more money than anyone without a victory and saying how good he is. But in yeah. like the short term, it's like you either have to win soon or break the record and never win. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. And yeah, I, I don't. Uh... And I think it's expectations, right? Like you go to a Ryder Cup. And you yeah. beat John Rahm on a Sunday, all of a sudden, and whether this is fair or not, like our expectation of who you are and what you're gonna be is 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 really high. And um, I would throw maybe Zalatoris in there. He's so young and uh, he's so inexperienced, he's not super, super young. But if if he's like legitimately gonna be a top 20, top 15 guy, I would I would kind of throw his name in there also. Okay. Well, we've got our watch list for the next year or so best bets we did pretty darn good i was the only one who lost i went with a plus uh 400 sean norris uh to be top south african over evr brandon grace and garrick higo uh he finished second brandon grace beat him there so i lose but the rest of these are winners so coach got ricky fowler over emiliano grillo greg went with tom hoagie top 20 plus 300 and you Kyle went with Colin Morikawa over Emiliano Grillo and EVR Eric Van Royen, which I don't think was even ever close. EVR finished 48th. Grillo finished. No, so I think my actual bet was Higo, not Grillo. Because I'm because it was two, it was uh it was two it South was, Africans. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I think you're right. So I'm gonna change this in the outline. So Higo, which then uh Higo finished 75th. EVR finished. So I'm, st I'm still safe. Yeah, you are uh, <laughs> you, you, by a mile. This one cashed. <laughs> yeah, I just, I've, yeah, I I almost went with, uh, I think it was CT Pan over Lonto Griffin. Oof. And I changed it at, at the last minute because I'm glad for that because CT Pan shot 76 on Thursday. So, yeah, Morikawa was who I thought he was this week. CT Pan got better every single round, but it doesn't help when your first round was a 76. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you finally broke par on Sunday. If you shoot a 68 on Thursday and get better every round, you're winning the golf tournament. But if yeah, you go 76, yeah. 73, 70, 68, not so, not so great. One and done. Uh, oh, boy. There was is... cash paid out in the one and done. Uh there's the updated standings if you're watching on YouTube with our selections from this week. A couple of notable things here. Coach, not at the bottom. We'll get to Coach in a second. Sia Najad at the bottom. Uh, 155000 He went with Johnny Vegas. Vegas finished T54. 20497 That doesn't seem like enough, does it? I thought the I thought the min was like 50 k in these. Yeah, the purse was like 10 mil. Yeah. So I, I, yeah, I don't know. Top they heavy. were missing a zero in there. <laughs> uh, Kyle, you're next. Now, to your credit, you got a quarter million dollars from Colin Morikawa, a T7. Unfortunately, the rest of us got a lot more money, but how do you feel about getting, this is like, to me, this is, this is a weird amount. Are you happy you got a quarter million from Morikawa or do you wish you got more? Obviously, you wish you got more. Yeah, I, of course. I wish I got more. I I think I, I'm actually okay with it. I feel good about like the the. I thought the pick was was. I, I'm I'm glad I made that pick, and I think that this is. If it was less than this, I'd be like, oh, that's a bummer. But with this, I'm I'm fine. I'm not like overjoyed, but I think it's a fine outcome for taking Morikawa this early in the in the year. I agree. I'm trying to see. I thought I ran this last year, and I thought, um, yeah, two hundred thousand. So basically, the winner of ours last year got ten million dollars at the end of the year, and then the you know the big payout at the end. But essentially, if you got two hundred or two hundred twenty-five thousand every event last year, you would have won. So this is kind of right yeah. in that in that happy area. Yeah. Let's see. Greg was the only other non Hideki backer this week he went with ricky fowler t44 29452 greg drops from 
first, Kyle, first to fifth. And I know he had his short list down to Hideki and Ricky, and he might be ruining that decision. Well, remember when you said that there's no way he would not be in first on Sunday night? And now I said I take fifth. any bet. <laughs> <laughs> and now he's in. Not only is he not in first, he's not in second, third, or fourth either. For that, like two you minutes, thought, you where I didn't know had, what was happening. I yeah, thought you he thought, thought he had picked Hideki. Yeah, yeah, I thought he picked Hideki. Um, for that two minutes, he could have gotten a thousand to one that he would be in fifth after <laughs> after the week. So, with that being said. Coach, I'm sure this is the biggest payday he's had to date. Went with Hideki, as did I, as did Jacob, as did Mark. So the current standings now look like this. Mark extends out to a $1.2 million lead. He's at 3.4. Jacob, $2.2 million in second. I'm in third, 2.1. Coach, living in the middle, baby, 1.9. Greg, 1.7. Kyle, 375,000. Sienajad, 155,000. Wow. Well, I don't think we've had a uh, a week where four of us found the winner. That's got to be a record. Producer Jacob, hop in here. I, I want to ask you something. Okay. When I sent the text on Wednesday of Hideki's transcript where he said, if I was a 10 going into or at the Masters, my game was a 10. And it's less than a one this week. How did you feel? Uh, terrible at first. And then thankfully, Rick G chimed in with uh, the quote from Morikawa ahead of the British Open, where he was that complaining. Was, that was such stuff, a good pull. Which is, yes. which gave so me glad all you brought that up. I slept so peacefully Wednesday night, knowing that Hideki Great. was just done over in Japan. Great. I'm glad for you and your Braves. Um, um, and, World and, <laughs> and, and, also, uh, just on top of that, I think that number is right as far as the the names lower down. Because if you remember, these events are like co-sanctioned by the Japanese tour. So mm -hmm. those those players who get in that end up finishing, you know, T54 in those tours, like if you give them a, a high amount of money, it screws their order of merit all up. Since it's like technically uh... In my theory, at least. Yes, and I think you're right. I, I was thinking of uh, the WGCs, I thought, were... 50. I thought that's what Berger got when he hit the drive and then withdrew on Thursday morning. I think he got 50 grand. That's why I always think 50 grand is the minimum payout in these, but that's a good point, Jake. Yep. The, uh, yeah, the Hideki thing, I think Mark brought this up, but him telling them the press that he was a one on a, on a, like his game was a one and then going out and shooting 64 was basically like, his media version of a one-handed finish that ends like eight feet from the, from the pin. Right. Like that's just, that's just who he is. I should have, I should have, of all people should have seen that coming. It, it is, it is amazing what these guys will say and then what they will do. It's like, um, he, in he football, doubled down on it on, yeah. on, on Sunday. He said, well, I had like a, my game is a two or a three this week. I'm like, you won by five. It's incredible. It's like it's the it's the golf version of in the NFL. It's like coach speak, or it's like I always think of it when uh, they get to training camp and every player ever is in the best shape of the best, shape, best shape of my best life. Shape. Yeah, best shape of yeah. my life. Every single player. Yeah. Every Everyone's time. also totally. fighting for their job. It's a completely level playing field whenever you get out to training camp too. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. completely level. Yeah. Every job's for an open, sure. open competition for sure. Yeah. Everybody yeah. knows that. Even Tom Brady. Uh, all right, gentlemen, <clears throat> that will do it. We are moving on to. Bermuda, don't look this up. The Butterfield Bermuda Championship. What in the hell is Butterfield? Butterfield is who, baby. I think they make uh <laughs> I think they make uh I don't want to embarrass myself, but I think they make like soap and like like bath and body products. <laughs> <laughs> they do not. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I'm sorry. I, I can only think of like buttermilk, like chicken or like buttermilk ranch or something like that. Like that's all I can think about. But I almost said they make, I almost said they make quilts. So that would have been worse. <laughs> I don't know why that came to my mind. You think there's a big, uh, a big uh, thriving quilt industry and they're trying to get into the, into the golf uh, demographic. Do you think that's, that's happening? <laughs> <laughs> it's 
It's a bank. Uh, what are they? It's a Bermuda-based uh, okay. bank. Yeah. Trust me. I it, don't was know like why. Four, it took me four Google searches to figure it out. So it's not like I do. Yeah, Butterfield just sounds like, I don't know, bat, like... <laughs> It's in Bermuda too. Like they don't make sunscreen. Are we sure? It sounds it sounds cozy, Butterfield. Like, yeah. 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 It's not. This is a it's fun a game. We should we should do this more often. <laughs> what does BMW do? <laughs> that's where we're headed. Bermuda, then I think Mayakoba, then somewhere else, because that's how golf Brooks and, and for, Brooks and Brooksy. The win. Uh that will be the day after Thanksgiving. But for now. Let me thank producer Jacob. Does all the hard work behind the scenes. That right there, it's Kyle Porter. You can find him on Twitter at Kyle Porter CBS, and you can find me at Rick Run Good. This has been the first cut, and we'll catch you next time.